Okay, here are some tips for a bitey puppy <laughs> trying to play fetch. You know, the first thing is don't hold it up high. I like to sit in a seat or, you know, on a stair. Um, stair is better for puppies so you don't have to bend over as much. But see, you don't want to hold it high because they paw at you, jump up, they get mouthy. You want to do it in line with their spine or lower. Now, the beginning of playing fetch is honestly tug. Some puppies don't realize that this is a give and take game, and that's why tug is so valuable. It teaches them not to just take it and run with it or go to the corner and chew it. Now, you definitely want to move your arm around. Keep it active, like, like you're acting like prey, but don't do it so quickly that they can't, you know, grip, okay? Now, she let go accidentally on that. I've got the leash. I'm going to wait till she picks it up and then gently pull her to me because her cum isn't great yet. And then just engage her again. And I'll show you how, once she gets a good grip, how we teach drop it. So I tuck my elbows in, I eat up the toy, and I freeze. And I'm just boring. I blocked her a little bit, asked her to sit by putting the toy up in the air. And then as soon as she sat, I mean, as soon as her little butt hit the ground, break gave it right back to her have a release word okay in the beginning make it quick and easy maybe you don't even get sit you just get drop it break drop it break drop it break here we go so i freeze i just wait her out i kind of did try to pull up a little bit to see if it would help but she kind of fought me more as you can see so i grabbed the leash to help just a little leash pressure up in the air as soon as she let go break gave it back to her but that was kind of my fault because I was trying to play around with what would work best for her and pulling it up kind of just made her fight more so just kind of keep that in mind play around with your puppy and what works best now I like to apply the word to the action so when she lets go when her when I can feel her jaw opening or softening that's when I say drop it and then break and give it right back to her. Now notice I'm still not really throwing it. I'm keeping her engaged. I want to get her to really understand, you know, what we're trying to do that to play. She has to involve me. She jumped up and got a little mouthy there. But hopefully that makes sense. You kind of want to stick to this. I'm waiting her out. Whoa, jumped up. Little, used a little leash. Let's see if I need it again. If your puppy's eating up the toy and getting your hands, little leash pressure, up, just hold it. And as soon as they let go, you release that leash right away. Break, release the toy. That's how to help with a really mouthy puppy that's like targeting your hands. But also you can watch your energy. Keep your, you know, moving the toy around more low key, a little bit slower. You know, don't make it move too rapidly. And let's say you have a puppy that won't tug. Well, that's okay, but only throw it like a foot or two feet, three feet at the most. <laughs> you know, don't be throwing it far to start with. Make sure they understand this is an interactive game. You need me, the human, in order to play with you. That's how you build a relationship and then learn to control the bite and then get this great release word. Release, um, release word to build confidence. Even if it seems like they don't need confidence, what you're doing is you're building confidence in the routine itself. So they actually build more trust when they pick things up in their mouth. And you can build on this. It could be sit break for a, you know, a week, then down, then place. So you saw how I kind of handled the mouthing there. I'm going to repeat that. Now this doesn't work for all puppies, but I like puppies to know I'm not gonna go for the toy right away. So I'll kind of pat them and celebrate with them by giving them some pats. And as soon as she went for my hand, I just froze, made a fist. I was boring when she went back to the toy, I went back to patting her to see what she would do and she was fine. So I didn't feed into it. I didn't make a big deal about it. If it had been more severe, I've got the leash right there. I can do leash pressure up in the air, calm her down and then go back to playing very just low conflict or co low confrontation is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 
Now, sometimes your puppy shouldn't be allowed to chew the toy. And if they're going to destroy a toy in five seconds, then you need, you know, heavier duty chew toys than, than these um, toys that don't have any stuffing in them. I was trying to encourage her, you know, get, you know, get a lot of uh, drive out of her with the squeaker, which I did. If your dog's destroying these toys, don't use squeakers, you know, go to more hardcore toys. But this is great. You know, she learns that she can chew the toy around me. I'm not always going to go for it right away. You know, and uh, and I can celebrate with her. And then here I'm just, again, just giving her affection. And if it didn't work, if she got really amped up or really bitey, then I just wouldn't do that right now. But I did want to kind of just show you guys what I do. See, if she escalates, I just do some leash pressure. She redirected herself back to the toy. And so there's a lot of value in not making a big deal about some of these things, even though it's painful. <laughs> because the more you focus on this kind of stuff, the better the puppy will get in general with other things in the house, right? They expect you to make a big deal about it. And when you don't, that alone can go a long way into helping you with a dog that's bitey or picking things up and hiding it and not wanting to, you know, drop it. One more thing before we move on, you guys should know that I work with a puppy two, three, four sessions with this before I usually actually throw it. And by throw it, I mean three, four feet, you know, and uh, by the end of her time with us, I was throwing it, you know, clear down the house. But I would always warm up with this first just to really make sure we've got this, you know, give and take down pat. Now, she was getting a little fussier as we went on, and she was getting tired. That, I mean, that's what it was, just like a baby. <laughs> so I move on to calming her down and working on enough after this, and just use the leash to kind of, you know, keep her in one spot, no more play. I'm going to go over that after I show you us playing fetch outside. And so this is just a longer, more detailed fetch video for a puppy. And um, we did do enough here, but uh, but I just don't show it here. I'm going to show you how I did it outside, utilizing place, which does make it a little bit easier sometimes. It really just depends on the, on the dog. But it's just using the leash to slow the dog down keep them in one spot don't give them any attention and they just need to calm down for a few minutes after fetch before you move on to something else okay as you can see we've moved on to the yard with long leash with a ball uh, I encourage everyone to continue to play tug with their dog it's got so many beneficial relationship factors uh, I won't go into the, the why but I just encourage you to do both but here I'm um, just getting a feel for her with the ball and she's just easily distracted, and sometimes you have to fetch the, <laughs> the ball. Please, quick. Yay! Yay! Here you go. Yeah. Teaching the ball to puppy drives me crazy because they drop it and it rolls, and you're trying to teach control, and it's really hard. So um, I would strongly suggest getting a ball with a rope on it. We just didn't have one small enough for, for her. I need to get one. It would have been much easier. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm working on a few things. So a really quick release. So as soon as she sits or lays down or goes to place, whatever I'm asking, something simple. And I don't even mean placing down. I just mean she jumps on the cot and then I release it right away. Like keeping it simple and fun. Nothing too challenging because we're going to get to the challenging part. So I eventually want her to learn, you know, and, and out, which means don't, you know, go and get it if you know if i've said out you have to wait and so i want to make the rest of it super easy okay so as soon as she does anything i ask anything simple i'd say break and release it right away the long line is so crucial to this exercise it's really important um if you don't have one you can get one on amazon really inexpensive and this if it looks kind of chaotic that's because it is <laughs> i'm trying to kind of stay relatively in the same spot each time i ask for place and uh throw it relatively in the same direction i was kind of playing with what worked best i stopped throwing it in the yard because she was getting so distracted and here we're working on proofing so good job Yeah, good job. Drop it. Oh. Place. 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 Break. 
so you saw me do it the first time. I didn't have to reset her at all. She did great. Second time, I just did it right then, bouncing that ball. I had to save place and reset her with the leash a few times. And that's kind of the name of the game is we're just giving her guidance. I might give her a, a tug of the leash, a pop of the leash. It just kind of depends on the intensity and how many times we've practiced this. But for right now, I'm saying place because that's what she knows. Eventually, that will change to out. So if I say out, it means don't go and get the ball yet. But she knows place. She doesn't know out. Uh, so that's why I'm reinforcing it with the place command. Eventually, I'll say out and I'll teach it the same way. You know, if she gets up, she'll just get a little pop of the leash. Uh, but again, to make her successful or more likely to have success in the beginning, I'm using a command she knows. So this time I roll it instead of bounce it. Pick up the leash, important. So as soon as she hesitates, I reward her with releasing her. It's very good. So as soon as she's successful, she's rewarded with a release. Alright, drop it. So what you see here is me switching, I say place, but then I switch to stay to reinforce place because we have worked on stay and I'm hoping that uh, it might be easier for her again. I'm wanting her to be really successful before, you know, myself or the owners decide to switch it to out, which is an advanced step. She does really well with stay and me using that hand to reinforce it. So that's probably the way to go with her. And so anyway, guys, just play with what you what you want to do at home, what you like at home. We also worked on drop it when uh, I was holding onto the ball in her mouth. You saw that. And then a couple times when I wasn't holding it, again, just to mix it up. And if she didn't drop it, I gave her a little tug of the leash, you know, and she dropped it. And so these are a little bit more advanced just to give you some ideas to start working with as you're advancing your puppy. Okay, moving on to enough work. Settle the dog down before moving to something else. You can see the hand motion I made there. I just cross my arms in front of me. I say enough. Place can be really helpful in the beginning stages, but I'm just using the leash. I just put the toy in my pocket, and uh, or I might even do it on the ground for more advanced older puppies. Put the toy on the ground, and we hang out. And I, they don't get in big trouble. It's all leash pressure and body blocking to keep them in one spot, whether that's you know, on place or one spot around me. Now, when I say one spot, I kind of mean within a bubble. So if I wasn't using place, she could just kind of stay within a bubble around me. She just has to be close to me, not bothering me. There's no petting until she calms down. No going into the yard to check things out. Like she just has to chill. And if she doesn't want to lay down, that's okay. I'm not forcing anything like that. Just using the leash to keep them close to me without being allowed to get into anything or on place, which is what can be more helpful for puppies when you're starting out. Just keeping them in that spot, it just kind of teaches them what they can't do. And a lot of times they'll just give up and lay down and relax on their own, which is a really valuable training technique. And so I really encourage everybody to do that after they play with their dog or they've given affection to their dog and their dog gets excited. Like you want to calm your dog down. Uh, it's really important. You want to. You don't want to just create excitement. You also want to be a part of being able to calm them down. Now, uh, in the house, I can sit down and do this, but outside, uh, we hadn't done that yet, and that's why I'm standing. It's easier when you're standing. Easier for the puppy. And then as you progress, you want to just you know sit down next to them and and hang out. But we do this for anywhere between five and 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever you want. But it needs to at least be two to five minutes to chill them out. <laughs> All right, one more bonus for you. She picked up a seed. What do you do? Pressure straight in the air. Fold the bottom lip over the teeth to try to get it out safely. 
She's definitely a very bitey puppy. I don't want her to see it as negative. I get more control over the situation by tucking her into me and shaking it out of her. <laughs> and then I give her tons of affection to keep it as positive as I can, which she was happy about because it's it can be really negative when you have to do that with the dog. But what you do is you fold you fold that bottom lip over their teeth to kind of make them gag a bit and spit something out as well as the leash pressure up in the air and then give them lots of scratchies, call them scratchies to keep it nice and positive because that can create a very combative dog.